for you know money moicano wants these these big events these big moments so i guess what are the emotions now that you do have a spot on this historic ufc 300 card uh feeling great ufc 300 uh great card great opponent i think it's a good opportunity for me so uh, i'm just honored to be here Correct me if I'm wrong, I think you guys were the last fight added to this card. So were you expecting to be on that card, or was it a surprise when they called you? No, it was a surprise. I was expecting to fight in UFC 301 in Brazil, or, or even uh, on the pay-per-view in London, on, on Europe. I was expecting that, because that, that, was, that, that would make sense. But guess what? They call me, and I'm here. Is this the better card to be on for you, 300, rather than those two other ones? Definitely, de definitely is a, is a card that I want to be. Of course, UFC 300, uh, on the prelims, several champions face each other, uh, like uh, Davidson Figueiredo and, and Cody Garbrandt, and I'm fighting on the same card. I wish it was on the main event. I wish it was on the main card, but guess what? It is what it is. And what do you make of Jalen as an opponent? Because obviously, I think we kind of expected you'd be fighting Patty because you guys were talking back and forth. So when they came with Jalen, what went through your mind? Uh, man, I don't... Of course, I, I wanted Patty because on the paper, it was the easiest fight, you know? The easiest fight, and uh, I would get more... Uh, more people know him. So th that's what it's about. But at the same time, I don't choose my, op my opponents, and I, d and I don't have time to, to sit and wait, you know, so I'm 34 years old, I have to fight, I have to get money, I want money, UFC 300, what, uh, which card would be better to get money, of course, Dana White is gonna, gonna raise the bonus, so I want the bonus too, and let's go, I think it's a good fight for me, to be honest, Jalen Turner is tough, but I'm better than him. Did you have to bring anyone to train with, considering how tall he was and how long he is? Yes, I, would, I was training with some 170 guys, you know, tall guys, strikers, very hard to take down, and I will be ready. And I know you, you like to be critical sometimes of certain main events and the apex and everything, but for this pay-per-view, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, man, I've, when they first started to make the card, I was talking a lot of shit about the card, you know, especially because I was... I wanted to see, like, John Jones, Conor McGregor, but I think Alex Pereira, he's, he's becoming a star in UFC, and I think in the end of the day, the card could not get any better, and especially for Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje, that's going to be a banger, that's going to be an amazing fight, and I, I'm glad that I will fight and then watch the fights. Actually, last one for me. Obviously, after your fights, you know, you call Moicano wants money. There's a lot of competition for these bonuses on this card. So I guess, how do you uh, separate yourself? How do you win on Saturday? To be really completely honest with you, I don't think I'm going to get the bonus. Even if I finish him, we have 13 fights, 12 champions, and it's going to be tough to, to have a fight better than Max Holloway and, and Justin Gage or... Sarukian, and Charles Oliveira, or uh, Alex Pereira. I, I think that the card will be, will have a lot of finishes. So to be completely honest with you, I just want to get the W. I want to finish Charlie Turner and move on. Going off of that with the bonuses right here, I'm just curious, do you think that Dana should do something special for this card? Maybe give everybody who finishes a bonus? 100%. He should do that in every card. You know, it's hard to get a finish on the UFC, and I think if you do, you should get more money. But guess what? I don't, I don't make the business. I am just an employee, so whatever they do, I agree with. Back here, Hanato. Speaking of money, I know you have your YouTube channel. You have a ton of things going on outside of fighting. You have the Home of Fight podcast now. So I'm curious, what do you think are some of the best side hustles for MMA fighters? I think talk about of MMA is easy because I have been training since I was, I started training Jiu-Jitsu when I was 10, so I know the sport. I, I, I compete professional MMA since 2011, so I have been in the game for a long time. And, but the problem is some fighters, they are dumb. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but some, some fighters, and I don't even speak English, but 
I am trying, but some fighters, they do speak English, but they are dumb, or, or sometimes they are lazy. But guess what? We don't have much time on this game. 15, 10, 10 15 years. And uh, I'm glad that you say huge shoot out, shoot out to my channel, money, my kind of channel, and huge shoot out to the podcast. Uh, show me the money. Me, Gilbert Burns, and Mary, I'm doing, we're doing a great work. So if you guys want to check, check it out. Great podcast. But uh, to answer you, Depends on what you like to do. I like to talk shit. I like to, you know, to make some money. So what's better to do than what's better than do a podcast? Hello. Hey, Hinato, Thank right here. Um, you mentioned your YouTube channel. And you've really connected with a lot of fans and become a lot more popular. But I know you've also taken a liking to MMA Guru. How much have you learned from him, and how much has that sort of uh, made up your channel? Uh, uh, at, at the beginning, I didn't know MMA Guru. I wasn't on the Twitch tried to stream in some games, especially because I, I got injured, my, my knee was hurt. And then everybody on the chat was saying, hey, you have to, to see MMA Guru react to a video. And then, and then uh, I watched a video of him live talking about MMA. And I, and I did my point, and, and I, I called him several words. And then uh, after that, I start to, to, to watch his content, and then I moved to YouTube. And when I, when I did a video about fighters, he, he um, d made a shootout. Like he's, he sent people to my live and to my videos, and, and that helps my channel a lot. I think one thing people are not realizing that the, today is a new game, completely different. You see guys that don't have any uh, background on journalism or they just, they just are on, on literally uh, their mom's basement, but they can connect with the, the, the public and, and they do a great job because they can, imagine that we're doing this, uh, this press conference right now and now you, you guys have to edit and have to walk and that's very hard. But, but for a guy on YouTube, he just take the video and, and talk shit about, uh, you know, fighters and, and give his opinion. So I think, uh, YouTube is going to get m much more popular in, in, in the next couple years. And to be completely honest, he's doing a great job. You like him or not, everybody's talking about him. Is that something you'd want to do after your career's done, is do that full time, is just do YouTube commentary? I want money. <laughs> yeah. if, YouTube, if I make money on YouTube, that's good. If not, I will uh, try something else. But of course, I, I like to talk about MMA. It's easy for me to do the videos. I like to connect with, with the fans. And I like the fans are, like you say, uh, recognize me a little bit more. And I think it's a good situation. And just last one for me, a win over Jalen, especially a finish, where does that put you in the division? Because Jalen's you know, fought some really good opponents, got some good wins. He's very good, he's very good. But I will beat him on Saturday, and I will be on the top 10, and then we'll see. We'll see, I don't have an opponent in mind right now, but uh, definitely I want to fight somebody on the top 10, I want to get closer to the title, and I want more money. Hinato right over here. Uh, Hinato, big press conference tomorrow. A lot of fans love listening to you talk. Do you have anything special planned when you get on the mic tomorrow? Not really. I never, I never try to plan anything, you know. I, I have my principles. I have something that some, sometimes I, I want to talk about. And uh, what I want to talk about, maybe tomorrow, maybe on the fight day, is... is uh, you have to get ownership of your life because back in the day I used to I used to culpa todo I used to blame other people for my for my faults you know I used to to give excuses for everything nowadays I am I, this has changed my life to be accountable of my actions you know if 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 I do something something go wrong that's my problem if if something if I do something something go right that's my, uh, that's my uh, actions too. So I, I wish people nowadays would care more about the accountability. I think that's my message. And then one more question to talk about what Bribi brought up. You have your podcast, Show Me the Money, with Matt and Gilbert. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys do talk about? We talk about money and MMA, and we bring some fighters to... to to do the podcast we, do, we did with Jamal Hill, and it's a very good show. And if you are a degenerate that loves gambling, Maddie, 
is a gambler and, and he's doing a good job. On the other day, he hit a, a 46,000 parlay with a thousand dollars. So motherfucker is making money. And if you like to, to your opinions about that, uh, watch the show. It's a very good show. And like the first video, we got almost 30K views like in, on the first video. And I think this podcast will be one of the biggest podcasts in, in MMA. We still need a lot of content in MMA, not generic stuff, like good stuff, good productions. And we're doing that on Show Me The Money. And Home of Fighting is doing a great job too. So it's a win-win situation for fighters. Thank you. Just a quick one right here. When you talk about MMA and fights with Gilbert and other people like that, do you kind of see an, another perspective that you might have not seen when you're in the cage? Do you get to learn a bit more just breaking down fights? Yeah, it's different because when you're talking about MMA against a guy that doesn't do MMA or, or, or the fighter, you can see different opinions. And definitely that changed my mind in a in, in couple fights. And especially if you're talking with a guy that like to bet, it's not like uh, a fighter because uh, let's say... Uh, Armand Sarukian and, and Charles Oliveira. I, if, I, if I am giving my prediction, I will try to do like on the technical aspect, right? I will say he's good that, he's good here, and I think he, one on another will win. But when the, when the guy likes to bet, he do like props and, and finishes on the second round and crazy stuff that I don't like. So uh, j just remember, I don't bet. You know, I just, I just go to the podcast and, and, and I gave my opinion about fight. Thank you so much.